I'm Marie Fielding from to the Appleton Museum. We are going to do a, a painting of a cardinal, and I have two different versions. You should have pre-painted your background color and traced whichever cardinal you wanted on yours. So I'm going to work back and forth on both of the cardinals. You should have painted your background. I know you can't really, you can't see the tracing that I've done here, but your background should have a color. And eventually we will end up with a completed painting of a cardinal, which they're just beautiful. If you haven't painted the background, you can just trace the bird on there because you really could probably fill in most of it with the pine needles. And then since I do a special little thing around the sides, we can probably pick that so you don't end up seeing a whole lot of white canvas. Like I said, if you haven't painted the background, you can leave it white and we'll just fill in a lot of the pine needles and we'll basically fill in your canvas. So I'll show you how to, I put white over my edges on top of the gray, like I did on this one, but at the very end, don't worry about it. I'll go into that later. Yeah, you need to get that traced on there. We usually work on a nine by 12 because it's only a two hour class and I like to finish it. So a nine by 12, but honestly, you could work larger if you wanted to. I mean, you can work smaller as well, but you could work larger and then just finish it on your own because you're going to get most of the, the bird done. And then the background here, I mean, if you had a larger, larger canvas, you could put a lot more pine needles in there. You could actually put another bird if you wanted to. You could put both birds in if you had a very large canvas. You're not going to see any pencil marks. Those are going to be completely covered. I just took some white with a tiny bit of black and mixed it, very little black, just to get rid of the white of the canvas. That's all. You want a pale green. You could have a pale green. It's really up to you. I like the gray because it's more wintry and it really lets the, the reds and then the greens show up better. Basically, as I go through painting the cardinal, it really doesn't make a difference which cardinal you've traced because everything that I'm going to talk about is you're going to do on either one. You know, we're going to use a basic red. You'll use a little bit of a, a reddish orange for highlights. You're going to use black so you're going to, and some orange. So really painted the same and they can be actually so beautiful. I don't ever add any water doing a background. If you're going to use a blue, just a tiny, tiny bit. Ultramarine blue would be very pretty, but since blue is very strong, boy, you don't need like a, a tip of the paintbrush into the white because it's going to change that really fast. And if it still seems, if it still seems too bright, add a touch of black to tone that blue down. That actually might help. And I don't have ultramarine blue. I just have a very basic primary blue that we use here in the museum. This, I'm going to put this down. If you have traced your bird, you can start adding some additional lines for the branches if you want to, but you don't have to. We can add branches later. And actually, when I start putting the pine needles in, I find that I, I start adding branches and I start overlapping things. We've got to put in the basic branch that the bird is sitting on and then just a couple so you have an idea where this bird is. Switch to this camera now. This one, I'm just gonna darken this up a little bit yeah, so you can see it. I'm gonna get started because I'm gonna go back and forth to the two different drawings, two different birds. I have on my palette, I have black, I, I will put the white out. I do have green, I can mix my own green later. And I have blue, yellow, I have two different reds because I like to have the highlights on the cardinal, but you can also mix an orange, which is another reason why I have the yellow here so we can mix. So really you can, you can stick with the primary colors and then just mix what you need. Or if you have an assortment you know, of acrylics of colors, if you have orange, you have a reddish orange, um, you have different greens, you can use all of those. But a lot of times with our classes, we try and show how you can make everything by sticking to the primary colors and then use white and black. So this is my palette right now. And I love to use a flat brush. What I'm gonna do is take my darker red. And if you only have, like, like that brighter reddish orange, you can add a touch of black to that. I am going to use my darker red. And the first thing that you're going to do is really paint this entire bird in the dark red. When I get to around the wing, I'm just going to paint that line right here where my wing is. When I paint the chest area, I'm going to leave just a tiny bit of a space so I can, I can go back later and I know where the outline of my wing is. I 
I want to get back here and, and continue painting with a flat brush. Uh, like I said, I can just put this down and I can drag this and fill in my bird. My paint has been sitting out here a little bit, so I'm going to add water over here. Leave just a little space there. I'm going to go back later. And when I paint around the head, take some of that paint off and I'm just going to use the tip of the brush. Hold that straight up and down. I might even get a smaller brush. I want to paint. that the head I'm going to put the brush right along the edge of that just kind of drag that paint in there so I'm going around that the black area of the bird and pulling that pulling this down and I'll do his tail I'm going to actually outline this tail. And there's a little curve, a little curve. And we'll put details into that tail later. So this is very easy because you're painting in that bird. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'll paint the entire bird red. Paint his wing first. Just going to leave a little space that I can go back in later. Just too much paint. Do that curve, you know, if you just kind of put your flat brush down and just kind of turn it, you're gonna get that nice little curve for the end of the tail. I'm gonna do that over here and just kind of turn it. And you get that nice little curve. Once you've got that basic red down, I like to do, you know, just a little highlight as if the sun is out there. I just need to touch this up a little bit. Okay, when you have the bird painted completely, I usually put a little bit of that reddish orange just to highlight the chest area and the top of the head as if the sun is, is shining. Now, if you want the sun coming in from the right, you're gonna put a little bit of that more on the back of the bird in the wing. I'm gonna go with the chest area and the top of the head. So I'm gonna take a little of that reddish orange and I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm just gonna use the same brush, but I'm just gonna take some of that and I'm gonna go back over my chest area. And if that's not bright enough, I'm gonna add a touch of the yellow and mix up a little bit brighter. And I'm just gonna go along here, that chest area, a little bit brighter.
yeah, there we go. I'm just gonna put a little bit on that, that chest and I'm gonna put a little highlights on the top of his head as well. And maybe a little bit on his shoulders. And this one, it would be basically, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put some on the top of the head here as it curves down just a little bit. And again, right in this chest area. bit on the wing back here. Switch birds again. Everything that we're going to do, you're not waiting for any of this paint to dry. You're just going to blend that right in. And if you find if you've put too much, then you go back and add some of that cadmium, the darker red, the cadmium red, if, you, if, um, if that's what you're using for your dark red. That's the nice thing about this being wet, the acrylic, you can just keep going over that and touching up. I'm gonna add a touch of blue to my red. I wanna darken this up. You can use black. I want to make a deeper red to put the outline of the wing and a little of the details in the, uh, the tail. All right, the tail comes down. You know, the tail comes down and it curves a little bit. Okay, so there's, there's like a curve at the bottom. What we're gonna do is I'm going to come down from about the middle and I'm gonna make a curve I'm going to make another curve, but I'm going to do the same thing in here, and I'm going to do the same thing in here. So there are layers in the tail, but this is just, you just want to give that illusion, and I'm going to do that in black paint so you can see it a little bit better. So if this is my tail, you're going to paint down and just do like these little curves. to show the layers of feathers in the tail. Okay, we don't wanna do it with black because it's a little too strong. But see what I am doing right now is I'm using the blue and my cadmium red and I'm gonna mix up a darker, a darker red, you can see here. And if you have a smaller flat brush, you can use that or you can use a round brush. See, I do have a little bit smaller, not that much smaller, but so I'm going to do this one first and then I'll show you. This one, it's hard to see because then I went back and I covered it with some pine needles. In this one, I'm going to use a round brush. And see, I would come down. You really can't see that, can you? You know what? I am going to add a little touch of black to this to darken that up. Let's try that so you can see that. So I would come down the middle. I'm not going to start way up by the branch. I'm a little bit down from the branch, and I'm going to come down, and I'm going to curve that, and I'm going to curve on the other side. And I'm just going to do a couple of these. So it curves and it curves um, because there are different feathers in here. Okay. This one, let's use a little bit, maybe. You can see the curve in the tail where that, where that dips in there. I'm just gonna put a line in here. And that might be just the easiest thing for me to do to, for you to see it. And then 
I am going to put a curve and another curve. We are just giving the illusion of some feathers and that's, this is really way too dark, this black. You should use a darker red. I'm using basically pure black here. You really don't want to do that. I'm going to go fix mine. I'm just going to make this a little bit darker red so it doesn't show up so drastic. This is not so drastic. This same dark red that you have mixed up, this is what you're going to use, you know, to outline your, your wing. See, I've got some lines coming down here and curving. There's a couple of different lines coming in. Now, as far as the wing, you're going to outline that wing. And then we're also going to put some lines in here. So I'm going to get a piece of paper. If this is your wing, okay? And this is the back of the bird. Okay, here's your wing. You're outlining that wing. And then across the top area here, you just wanna make a couple of little, just a little curves, just a few. I usually do a couple of rows and then just a few here and then bring that some lines down. Oops, this should, this should be, that should look like that. So I'm gonna bring some lines down and a little bit of a curve, a couple of different lines to give the illusion of the feathers, make those darker. Just a few little lines. And let's see, let's see, see them there. Or there. There are some little curved lines here and some just some straight lines here. So if we come back here, I'm gonna put some of those lines in here. I want a couple just little some curves here. Just a couple. And then I just want a few little. That's my wing. Now, if you have gone and you've made that line way too thick, then just go back, you know, and put some of your red right over it. You've got too much paint over that with your red and I can take some of that out. I've got way too much black down here. I am gonna add some red on top of this again because I don't like the way that looks right now. So that, that took some of that out. And I'm just gonna put a couple of lines right down the middle here just a couple of curves and I'm going to leave it at that. Let me do this one. Outline that wing just for a little bit. A little bit of curve up here for that wing. lines, the outline of, of the wings, the feathers in the wings. Because this tail feather, these, I mean, the tail actually is underneath this branch, you can, if you want to, make this just a little bit darker to begin with, and because it is going to be, have a little bit of a shadow, 
because it is underneath the branches. Oh, let me go back to this guy. Feathers here, I was going to add. Okay, let's touch this up. You need a small brush, and we're going to put the black in around the face, and we're going to mix up an orange as well. And I'm going to mix up the orange first, and I'm going to go back and take one of my tiny brushes. I'm using a round brush now. And I'm going to just paint in that beak. Got some water there. We'll go back and put a little line in that beak later. I want that to dry a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. You're really just trying to get an illusion of there's tail feathers. So you know what? You might want to let that red paint dry completely. I'm gonna do this one. I'm gonna completely paint this red again. And I'm gonna let it dry. And you know what? We can come back to that. So I am gonna let that dry so then I can go back. These are just a, a quick little painting. So we're really not going into a lot of detail. You're not really painting in all the, the details of every layer of feathers. So you're just giving an illusion. So right now I am gonna go right to black because I wanna paint in that area completely black and with a small brush. Now here's where you want to be careful because the eye is actually black as well. Right now, I am going to paint around that spot where I want the eye and I'm going to leave it white right now. So I'm going to paint this and I am leaving, paint around that eye. I'm gonna leave the eye white, that little space. Eventually, I'm actually gonna use a Q-tip or a tiny little brush to paint a white line, and then I'll go back and paint that whole eye in black. And I'm gonna put this real close, but can you see that eye? It has a tiny bit of a white line that shows the outline of the eye and then a tiny little dot. So right now, I'm just leaving the eye color of gray so I can go back in and see I did the same thing here but there is a tiny little white line outlining that eye paint in around that eye space and leave it for now so I'm going to paint in there is my eye is right in here So I'm gonna leave that space. And you really don't see the other eye over here because of the angle of his, of, um, of his face, the way he has turned his face. I just paint a little bit of black just a little hint of black, like it's coming down underneath his beak, which it is, but we really don't see a lot of that. So here's his eye up here. 
I'm leaving that little white space. I'm not painting that eye in at all. Just leave it out because it's going to be too hard to give that the angle of the head. It's just easier to actually leave it out. And I can see where, and I'll pull this up. I need to just add a little bit of red right in here. There's a spot there that's not painted in. I just want to touch this. I have a little space there. There we go. Okay, here's the other one. See, and I've left a little bit of a space. We'll go back and we will paint that. You know what? Let's do the eyes right now. Because I think that black around the eye is probably dried enough. A toothpick works great. You can also use that very tiny, tiny brush, you know, and get it right to a point. But sometimes I like to use a, a, a toothpick for this because it, you don't need a lot. Just need a tiny, like a hint of a line to outline. So I'm going to take a toothpick and I've just got a little bit of white paint on that toothpick. And I am just going to like put a little white line. Now this is actually too thick, but that's fine. See, that white line is actually too thick, but I'm gonna put black paint on that later. I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. I'm going to put a little bit of white paint And I don't go completely around the eye. I just put a little bit. We're just gonna leave that for now. At this point, you could use your toothpick. To put that line in for his beak. If your paintbrush is not skinny enough, you can use that and paint that in. I am using black and I'm gonna take my paintbrush now. If you wanna use a toothpick, you can use a toothpick. Hold your paintbrush straight up and down. I can paint in that line for the mouth, excuse me, the beak. I'll paint in a couple of those little, there. And I'll paint in this. That line. This one, you actually have a little bit of the lower beak showing, lower part of his beak. So it comes from up here and then down to the point. And then this. so there's a little bit of orange there that would show the lower part of his beak. Okay. This red on the tail is dry now. So I am going to go back with a pure black because remember I said you just want to give an illusion. So I'm going to put a straight line down the middle. I'm going to put another line and curve it. And just another line and curve it. That's all I'm going to do just for that illusion. I've done that. I've done that on this one as well. I'm just going to give an illusion of a couple of lines, of feathers. That's it. You can tap the end of your brush and see if I go back. There's the eye with a little bit of a white outline. The end of the brush with some paint straight up and down. And there's the eye with a tiny bit of a white outline. I do want to mix up a brown now. You can mix up a brown with red and green. You can mix up a brown with orange and blue. Complementary colors, opposites on the color wheel will give you that brown. Orange and blue give you a, a warmer brown than the red and the green. I am going to use actually the red and the green myself to mix up this brown. If you use cadmium red, the red is very strong. Add some more green in here. I tend to, as I'm mixing, I pull my paint towards the middle and I find and it doesn't spread out so much and it doesn't dry as fast. So I've got a pretty good brown here. I'm going to get another flat brush, a little bit smaller. That's why I had suggested you have several different flat brushes, different sizes to use. I use flat brushes a lot. 
I know we haven't painted the bird's feet yet and we will do that, but I wanna get an outline. I'm gonna paint in, follow my lines here, right underneath my bird here. And that's still very red, isn't it? Let's add a little black to that brown. Yeah, that's better. I'm gonna go around to the feet right now. I just wanna get, I know my feet are in here. So I'm just gonna paint this in. And this is where you really can decide where your branches are. I drew in a couple of lines for you, but it's really, if you have a very thin flat brush, you can put this down and just drag it and then hold it straight up and down to just add little tiny extra branches where we're going to put a lot of those pine needles. And I'm gonna do this one. So I've got, line that up right at the edge of the bird there. So, and I'm, hold it straight up and down and I'm gonna put a branch here. They don't have to be anything really fancy because you're gonna cover this with pine needles. I'm gonna just go around his, his foot there. You, you wanna paint in as many branches as you want. And I'm gonna just add a couple more here. And then I like to add some coming up behind the bird. So if it, it gives the illusion that he's kind of sitting in, you know, in the tree. Okay, I'm gonna leave this right now because I can always go back and yeah, let's have one come down here. And sometimes you don't even need those branches. When we start adding the pine needles, you're going to overlap. So sometimes you may not even see the branches, but this gives you a start. I'm gonna take that thin brush and I wanna go back and do the legs. Now that I know where my branches that the bird is sitting on, I'm gonna take a little bit of a black, bit of the, I'm gonna mix a little bit of that brown in there. Hold your brush. You want the tip of your brush. You don't want what they call like the belly of the brush. You want the tip and you just want to bring that and that. You want to give the illusion that this is claws here are going around that branch. This is where I am gonna go back now and paint the branch a little bit more. So it looks like it really is going around that branch. Okay, fan brush, the pine needles, I, I don't know if I would use a fan brush because it's too curved. When you're painting branches and leaves and stuff on some trees, yes, they, they'd be beautiful. I don't usually use it because pine needles are straight, so I don't usually use a fan brush for that, but you could, you know, if that's what you're more comfortable with. Okay, these feet are coming out from the bird, down over the branch, and then it's like they're in three parts because they're curving around. So it's like, you know, you've got your knuckles here. I'm gonna do it this way, All right? There's this part and there's this part, and this is the one that's curving around the branch. Sometimes I actually paint them 
in those three little, and then I kind of go back and just fatten that up a little bit, but think of them as the knuckles kind of in your, you know, your hand as well on your fingers. I think I made them a little too long there, but down and down, straight down and kind of curved around. So it comes out and down and kind of curves around that branch. This one is a little bit, a bit off there. So, and then I can paint in the rest of this branch. I can go back and fix. I'm gonna paint right over actually those um, claws from the bird. because I don't want them to stick, you know, really stick out. So I'm gonna paint over that again. I can see that enough that, that's, that's kind of thing. I think I'll paint a little branch in here. So I can see them, but I don't want them to be that obvious. And I'm gonna darken up that branch. I mean, I can see his leg. But it's not you know, really sticking out. Now you can use black on this, the branches too, if you want to. Use your tiny brush, add some thin little branches on there that are coming out from your main branches. And now we're going to mix up some greens. Turn my palette around a little bit. So I've got all reds on that side and I'm gonna make some greens over here. I'm gonna mix up two different greens. I have a regular green right from the bottle. Now this would be the kind of paint that we use, the student grade, and the yellow is the same. I wanna use a, a regular green, but I also wanna mix up a brighter green. So I'm gonna take some of that regular green and I'm gonna mix that. Now, if you want to, you can use your blue and you can mix up a green. You know, so if you've only got your primary colors, you can mix up a green with your blue and your yellow. I think I, I mistake got a little bit of red in here, but yeah, I think I did. Just trying to give you different options. The other thing you can do is if you, if you want a much darker green, I'm gonna put some more green out here. You can add black to it and have several different shades of green. So I've got some green there. If I take some black, I can mix up a dark green. It's nice to have a couple of different options here. I'm gonna add some of this. This is gonna give me a nice green also. So this right here is black and yellow and some green. So while this is kind of setting up here a little bit, there. We're actually going to add a little bit of white before we add the green pine needles. If you're living in a, a country that has snow, then you're great. You know what snow looks like on top of trees. If you're living someplace where you don't usually get snow, I always think of, especially the first snow, is almost like frosting on the tops of the branches, like somebody just coated the tops. And when I first started teaching down here in Florida, because I'm from New England, I, that's how I would explain it to my students. Think of taking frosting and just layering it across the top of a branch. And it's just so pretty. So really, that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to take some white and I'm going to hold my brush straight up and down. And I'm just going to go across the tops of these branches to give them a little bit of snow. 
look at your branches and try and figure out if the, the snow is coming down, then where would it hit? Would hit along the tops of the, that branch, maybe a little bit there. I just want to highlight a little bit. You can go back later and add more to that at any time. I would do the same thing here. I'm going to put some snow. On the tops of my branches. Now I'm gonna show you how I do pine needles and I'm gonna do it just on this piece of paper first. I'm gonna take a larger flat brush. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna put two different shades of green on my brush. I'm gonna hold it straight up and down and I'm gonna tap it in this and I'm gonna tap it in this. So I actually have two different shades of green in here. make this easier to see. Let's use this brighter green. So I use the regular green and I'm gonna use a brighter green. And I'm going to, I wanna do this straight up and down. All right, so if I have a branch, okay, my pine needles are gonna come out at an angle from that branch. So I'm gonna slant them straight up and down. You wanna go along and tap those as if all of those little needles are sticking out. I'm gonna use just that plain green. I'm gonna start at the end and I'm gonna put just straight up and down. those little pine needles. And you can pick up different shades of your green. You want those lines to look like pine needles. And using different shades of green, I'm gonna put some light in here, light green. This is gonna take you a little bit of time because you wanna go around Always start at the end. You know, you want to have some come straight out and then you want them to angle out. Remember, it, you don't have to show every single little branch that these needles might be attached to because we're just going to keep going and filling this whole area in. Filling in and overlapping until I get this, this whole area, all of the branches, everything filled in. Here is the, the best part. If you don't like the way something looks, if you don't like that tail or something, oh, put some pine needles on top of it. I'm gonna put some down here. I could paint another branch down here and I could overlap this tail if I don't like the way that tail looks. I just mixed up some white with some green and I can put that in there too. Well, that's not showing up too much. Let's add a little more white as if there is some snow mixed in and some snow on those. See, and I can overlap and put some uh, right onto that cardinal right in there. Got a little bit of yellow in there. Uh, that's too much yellow. So I'm gonna go over that with some green but it kind of puts a little bit of light in there. Just make sure you're holding your brush straight up and down, flatten the brush out every once in a while, because as you're pushing down on the brush, it's gonna spread those 
um, bristles. So go back and just kind of flatten it again and you'll get a better line. I'm going to put a couple across the top of this, the bird here, his, his chest. So he's got some needles across there. Like I said, this takes time. And this is where you can decide, you know, if you want to add more branches in or just keep going with the pine needles with even out adding the branches. Put some snowy ones in there. You're giving an illusion here. See, I'm just putting a little bit of white on top of some of these to highlight them. I can do the same over here. Just, just overlap some of those pine needles. You want him to look like he's really right in that tree. In the wintertime, they would be nice and thick. I need to fatten this one up here. Get some more. I can do some in this one too. See how it's coming out? I don't wait for any of this stuff to dry. I just go right on top of it, blends in. I mean, you could, because I have gone back some of these paintings and put more things right on top after everything is dry, but you don't have to wait. Sometimes it's nice when they do actually blend in to one another. I use transfer paper a lot of times when I'm trying to draw something. I'll draw it on paper and get it the way I want it. And then I use transfer paper to put it onto my canvas. Also, that way I can go to a printer and either make it larger or make it smaller to make it fit whatever size canvas I want to use. Now, if you put up a lot of branches, you have a lot of work to do. The yellow in here too. And as you can see, I'm going along and, and overlapping a lot. Put some white in here. This one doesn't even have a branch here, but I can always go back and make a tiny little brown line if I want to. But I do want to fill this little area in. So I could go back and add a little line in there. You know, when you're doing this too, every once in a while, you might want to just put this up, take a couple of steps back and look at it. I'm looking at this right now and I kind of, where I added the yellow down here, I kind of like that because it does look like the sun is coming in through the branches. So every once in a while, stop and, and take a step back and see how it's coming out because you're working so close here with all of these little dabs and dabs that after a while, I don't think you get the best view of what you're doing. A lot of these, I don't have separate little branches, but I'm just kind of filling in and overlapping. Always cover a bit of that brown branch. You don't want to really see that. I mean, you want to see it, but you don't want it really sticking out. You want to cover it as much as possible. You can overlap your colors, your different shades of green. It makes it a whole lot more interesting. And I'm going to mix up even a darker shade of green here. Get a little more black. Let's take some of this green, mix up a darker, really dark green. Here's some really dark green, so I can blend that in too. Just gonna go back over some of those areas. If they don't make perfectly straight lines, it doesn't really make a difference. I mean, with a flat brush, see, I, I am getting a little spots that are not completely filled in with, with paint, but that's fine. And I'm going to go right over some of this bird. With your pine needles, you can cover a lot of things that maybe you didn't like the way you did something. Cover up some of that tail. I 
oops, too much yellow. I'm going to go back at, in here and I'm going to fill in some of those spaces too and make this look just a little bit thicker. This is where I do want to add, let's see, I'm going to add another branch in here and have that come down. I can put another one there, put a line in there to make the branch, put one in here. Do definitely want to put some up here. And I'm going to have one come up behind the cardinal. And it doesn't have to be whole, you know, lines. You're just adding a little bit. So you're giving, again, you're giving the illusion that the branch in here, and then you fill in with your pine needles sitting on that. This is going to take you some time to finish. What you can do, and I'm going to come back over here. I've used, again, the end of my paintbrush. Give the illusion that it's snowing, just little drops of white paint. You can put some holly berries if you want to add just another little touch of color because you've got so much greens in here. When you do add that, think about how your eye bounces off a canvas or any, any type of picture. You're not conscious of it, but a lot of times artists will tend to put things in a triangle. Okay, I've got things here. I've got red here. I got red up here. I got red up here. You want the viewer's eye to bounce around the canvas and take in the entire picture. So if you're going to add any little holly, then yeah, make sure you've got some. So it kind of goes around your bird. You can see in this one, there are no branches up here. And some of these are a little bit paler, just very, very faint as if they're further into the tree. You can fill in this entire thing with pine needles and make the bird look like he's sitting really way deep inside the tree. There's not a lot of brown lines in here, but the viewer is not going to be picky about what they, they see. They are seeing a bird in a tree. I do want to show you if you can look, do you see how there's a little bit of white coming across the, the edge of the canvas? I like to do this with a lot of my, my canvases. I think it gives a little bit of a finished look. See how it looks like there's snow coming down off the edge of the canvas. If you didn't paint the background, I would not do it with white. I would then mix up, let's say you could mix up a pale green. You can mix up a blue, but oh man, you have to be really careful about blues because they can get way too strong. I'm gonna mix up a very pale green so you can see it. And even though this canvas is gray, I think green would probably be the best. Okay, let's get a little more. Yeah, that would be a light green, I think would be really pretty. Unless you're into, I could actually see myself doing this in a gray or a dark gray. All right, I've mixed up a very pale green. And the way I do this is I get some on a, a flat brush. What you're trying to do is catch the edge of that canvas. So I might paint the edge of this canvas that pale green. And then what I'm going to do, I want to pull this across the edge of the canvas. And that's how I might finish it off. It's just, it's like a flick on the canvas. That's really pretty heavy and that's, that's fine. But it also, it just gives it a little bit of a finish to it all the way around. It's almost like it, it hugs the picture. And I've done it in in white on here, you can see. And this is that pale green. Now, if you don't like the green, then you know what? Let's try. This would give you a more dramatic if you mix up a dark gray, and which I'm going to do right now. So let's do it on this one. Okay, so I do have a gray canvas, but if you have a white canvas, I've mixed up a dark gray. Here's the dark gray. And if I just cut the edge of this, I'm going to. Give this. That's a very dramatic look to my canvas right now, which I'm not opposed to because I do like like blacks and whites that highlight. See, again, if I just pull this across the edge of the canvas. And you can be very light with it, light-handed with it, or you can get as heavy as you want. And honestly, kind of like the gray. 
it depends on how dramatic you want to go. But see how it, it looks like it's giving that picture a frame? Soften up those edges up out there and I'll put some at the bottom. See, I can always go back and add more pine needles anytime I want. Bottom of your paintbrush, dip it straight down into your paint and that's it, just a dot. And you can use different size paintbrushes. You can use a toothpick if you want really tiny, tiny little dots. Put your toothpick in paint and add tiny. You know, and this is where if you want to add that, like almost like a little twinkle in the eye of the bird, tiny, tiny dot with a toothpick. Now you really can't see that very well. There's that tiny little dot in the eye and that's done with a toothpick. So I could do the same here much bigger dot in that one, but you could use a toothpick for that. And you could use the toothpick for the snow if you wanted to. But again, it's just paintbrush straight up and down into the paint and then onto the canvas. I use the deepest red that I have. I've got enough here in the cover. I would go straight down. You know, the placement of these holly berries, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's probably a correct place to put them. I just kind of put them in an area where I've got a, a couple of branches coming together. That's, that may not be correct. You know, I'm looking around here, so I've got some here. I don't have a lot done here, but I might put some right there. Again, I'm going to look at, so if I've got some here, eventually I will put some over here and I've got some down here. You don't want to overdo it because it's bright red. If your background is dark, I'm going to put white on the canvas that I have. Again, I'm going to use just plain white and I'm going to grab the edge and just kind of flick it. I don't use any water. Normally I wouldn't make it this thick. I just want to make sure it shows up. I would do very little bit. It's almost like as if the snow is coming into the tree. So it's just that little bit. I just like the way it looks like a frame. Catch that at an angle and just a little bit, just, just drag it just a little bit. Be careful that you don't have too much paint on your brush. I would fill in as much as you can. In the wintertime, think about it, they're tucked in the tree and they need to stay warm. So there's pine needles all over, everywhere. I hope you enjoy this at the Appleton Museum here in Ocala. If you really like this painting, do a bunch of I have painted over several of these canvases. Don't paint with white paint thinking, oh, I'll just paint it with white and it'll be fine. No, it won't. You need to use a gesso once everything is dry. If you have these dots here, because they tend to be raised, smooth, rub those down and let them dry because that will give you a bump later but you need to put a gesso that's g-e-s-s-o it's it's what they put on a canvas to prepare it put a good coat on there you may need two depending on how dark colors are especially red but then yeah then go do it again i think i have a canvas that has three different paintings underneath it this is a little dramatic so i'm going to lighten this up a little bit i'm going to add a little bit of white around there and then i need to go back and fill in my my pine needles this also gives it a little more wintry look there so thank you for coming and keep painting Bye-bye.